welcome. Today I decided to do some eco printing or eco dyeing. Um, I use those terms interchangeably. I think there is a difference between the two, but I don't know what it is, so I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> um, I thought I would record my process because I know a lot of people are interested in it. And I, sh I did do a video last year when I first launched my YouTube channel showing my process, but I'm not sure I explained it all that great. So I'm gonna to try to be a little more organized, a little more um, explanatory, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the first thing, um, I'm gonna show you everything you need to do this. It's a bit at first, but it's not complicated. You just need to gather a few things. And once you have those things, you can reuse them over and over again. So, um, one of the things you need is a pot to boil your paper packets in and I'll show you mine in just a few minutes because I have it on the cooktop heating up my water while we chat and I put my bundles together um, I wanted that to start heating up because mine I have a giant pot that I bought um, it doesn't have to be big but whatever you use make sure and all the things that you use for this process don't cook on them don't use them for cooking eating preparing food all that stuff okay one of the main things you need is something to sandwich your papers in and then you tie them up and I'll show you all that later, but you need two of something like this. Now, I found this is the easiest thing for me to find and use. These are those um, plasticky cutting boards from the kitchen store. And you know they over time they do get pretty beat up, but they have I've used them numerous times, countless times, and they are working well so far. So I keep using those. Some people use pieces of wood. Um, some people use um, metal pieces if you have some that are thin enough. Some people use tile, and I have some tile left over from a project in my house that I also use occasionally. You can see it's cool because it has a pattern on one side. So you can, you can, t I've done it both ways and the leaves actually imprinted on the tile one time. So you can put it together this way, this way, you know, different ways. And this makes a cool imprint on your, um, on your paper. So you could use something like this. It doesn't have to have these holes. This just happens to be the only tile I have. And then I have these metal tags, which are beautiful because they've been in the eco bath for many times and they're rusty and they're grungy and they have pieces falling off. But these are metal tags that I got from Michael's one time on clearance. This is what they look like when they haven't been used very much. I've only used this one, I think, one time. And then they've, over time, they become rusty, which is great. And you can make little papers in between these two. I'm hoping to do a little bundle today. Okay, the next thing, as you can see, I have gathered plants from my yard. I don't have flowers in my yard because we have deer that eat the flowers. So I really got tired. I love the deer. I love seeing them. I'm happy they roam around and eat whatever plants they want is fine. But... I got tired of planting flowers and then lots of we would go we have a big yard we'd go and get lots of flowers plant them and then the deer would eat them literally overnight they would just eat those <laughs> flowers so I don't plant those anymore if you want to eco print with flowers this is what I do I just buy a bundle of uh, flowers from the grocery store so I've done that before I have a bowl that I keep some water in and some of the pl of the leaves go in here if they look like they're wilting a little bit and then I have so I have different leaves from my yard that I will use for my bundles and I have some eucalyptus leaves that a friend gave me because I don't have one of those in my yard and I like to group them like leaves with like leaves and plants because that's easier for me to pick how, to, how I'm going to arrange them on my paper and then you need either some string or some rubber bands or some, I like to use these binder clips because it's quick and easy and I'm lazy, but they do start to go bad up and grunge after a while, as you can see. I don't know how long these will last, but I keep using them till they do. And I'll show you how to use these in a minute. 
Now, one of the reasons I decided to do some eco printing today is because I have this acorn ink that I made last year, last fall, um, from acorn caps, and it was really quite easy, but I made a lot of it, and I have all this left, and I decided I really need to use it or toss it, because you can't, can't keep forever. So I'm gonna try that in my water today, in my boiling water. And then, so you have your leaves, you have your, your thing, something that you're gonna bundle your papers into. And by the way, I have actually made bundles with nothing holding them together, just like string. And those come out okay too. Okay, so then the other thing you need to help the process along is vinegar, white vinegar. I have this gigantic jug because <laughs> We use it for cooking too, and so I want to get a big container. And since I've been ordering f uh, food online uh, and delivering curbside, <laughs> I didn't realize, you know, my the size my size perception is not great online. So <laughs> I got this giant container. You don't need that much vinegar, but that is um, mordant that helps um, that helps with the imprinting of the leaves onto your paper. So the other thing you need is paper. So of course I have my paper way over here and I'll go get it. <laughs> the other thing that I sometimes use, at first I use this because I thought you needed to, um, I use alum, which I got online also. You don't really need this, but you can use it or get it if you want to. So let me show you what I have pulled out. Do I have everything here? Oh. I forgot my book pages. Okay, you can use any type of paper that you want to. I mean, honestly, any type of paper. Um, some of the paper I use is this um, watercolor paper. It's 90 pounds, 90 pound watercolor paper, 50 sheets. I don't know, I think I pay around, I wanna say $10 for this, maybe less. So I like it because um, the heavier watercolor paper, to me, it's sometimes harder to use in journals, which is what I mainly use these for. So that's why I like this 90 pound weight. Um, you could probably get it somewhere else. I don't know, I just buy it online. And then I like to print on index cards a lot. So I got different types. And from my wonderful knowledgeable friend, I found out that you can use construction paper and also do some eco printing, which I will go over with you when we get to that point. You can use book pages, you can use copy paper, right? The same that you use on your printer works great. You just have to be careful because it's thin and it will tear easily if you open it too quickly or, too, or not carefully enough. But I'm gonna use that just to show you that you can do that. All ki any kind of paper, you can use anything really. So I'm gonna get the rest of my paper I'm going to show you my big pot of boiling water <laughs> and then we'll put some bundles together. Okay, I have my papers all around me. I have, um, I have my plants. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I forgot anything. Okay, so first thing I do is I start layering plants with paper and it's really just random. Um, I believe that if you put the vein side down, if that's the right way to say it, on uh, touching the paper, I think you get a better imprint, I believe. <laughs> I think I've seen that somewhere. So I do that. Usually what I do is I'll start like that and then I'll put my paper down. I don't worry about being perfect with this at all. Okay, then you get some more leaves, and I just, um, you know, I just randomly pick, I'm gonna trim this a little bit. I randomly pick leaves. Sometimes I mix leaves together, you know, like maybe I won't use all of these, but for this page, I'm gonna just use uh, these leaves for just to be easy, for it to be quick and easy. And then you put your paper down like this, and you add another leaf. I'm gonna use oh, some leaves that weren't with my the proper <laughs> pile. Okay, I'm gonna use these. Um, and you know, 
know, I like to do things in odd numbers, so I'll put three little leaves like that. Now, I often fold my paper like this, but if you don't want to, I tore some paper in half, and you can just make your bundles like this, individual pages. That's not a problem at all. You can do it any way you want to. So let's put some of these. Let's see. I don't know. I just kind of do it haphazardly, honestly. <laughs> um, it, it usually always comes out pretty, and um, you can be more meticulous about it and uh, if you want to do a particular design. Okay, now, the other trick I learned from my good friend who knows how to do this is um, using construction paper. So what you need, you can use one color, that's fine, but to get a more interesting um, uh, results, you use two colors, and what you do is you put one, one color down, it can be any color, of course, and then let's put some leaves, and um, then you put the other color on top of that. So let's do one more to make up, and then you put the other color on top. And what happens is when you boil this, these two colors blend together to make a new color, <laughs> and it comes out really, really awesome. We'll see in the end how that turns out. So that's what I do. I don't have a big variety of leaves today. I don't have a big variety in my yard at all. So, um, but I, you know, I'm pretty happy with the results I get. Let me get a little one and throw it on here. Okay, so um, next I'm gonna try some book pages. I just randomly grab these. I have no idea how they're gonna turn out. They're really pretty. I hate, almost hate to <laughs> use them for this. But I will. We'll see how they turn out. I don't think I've ever used these before for eco printing. We'll put some ferns. These ferns make pretty good imprints, I have to say. And I'll just cut one in half so that I can have my three. And just kind of arrange them there like that. Any old way is fine. Fold it over and get some more. Look at this giant leaf. Wow. I don't know if I can use that one. Um, oh, these. Okay, I forgot about these. They make really good imprints. So if this book doesn't print well, these pages, then this one should work well if it doesn't. Um, the other thing I'm going to use is my index cards. So I mix and match colors all the time in these batches with construction paper and index cards. And again, it really doesn't seem to matter. So I'm just gonna put one index card on top here. And then, um, let's see, let's use these again. I have a lot of these and they print really well too. So let's use them uh, kind of jumbled, not jumbled, but a little bit more Casual, I guess. <laughs> Casual? I don't know. But you know what I mean. So I'm thinking I might fold that in half, so that's why I'm arranging these like this. Okay, then I'm going to put a green card on top of that. And then I'm going to keep building like that. I have some, let's get some copy paper out because I want you to see. This is plain old copy paper, nothing special. And, um, it really, it really, really works well. So let's just test that out <laughs> and uh, see how it works. Okay, I, I didn't tear any of these in half, so let's just do it this way. And oh, let's see, oh, I didn't use my eucalyptus. These are really, really dry, so I don't know. I, I haven't really used these very much, so I'll, we'll have to see how that turns out but I believe eucalyptus leaves make really good imprints. I think I'm gonna tear those up. Whoops, I'm putting them the so-called wrong way. Okay, so that looks, that looks nice. Okay, so then I'm going to fold this over and then I'll keep layering. And I just keep going until I have a bundle that I feel like is a good size. I'm gonna put this to the side 
and I'll make a small bundle to show you my small bundle. I think I'm going to do two bundles today. I mean, yeah, two regular and one small like this because um, I don't want to take all day to do this. <laughs> I have done that in the past and it's fun, but I don't have the time right now. So let's layer some, some uh, plants here. Um, these are good for um, the little index cards. They make really cute imprints. So let's do one here. Let me try the um, the eucal let's try the eucalyptus, just one eucalyptus. And then um, I have some colorful index cards as well. Uh, let's see. This one is really cool. Let's see if it prints like that. I don't know. It would be really awesome if it did. I have regular index cards, but I think I'm going to use... Oh, I have some small ones somewhere, too. Hmm. I don't know where they went to. But let's use... Wait a minute. Let's use yellow and green. This one is a little big, but I think it'll work. So let's put yellow there. And then we'll put, again, one of these. I know these print well, so hopefully they should look great. Um, let me use the one that's in the water, because these are the smaller ones. And then I'm going to put green on top of that. Then I will continue, I think I'll just continue layering with uh, whatever cards I decide to use. I'm going to put together my bundles and then I'll be back. Okay, I have my two bundles together and I'm going to show you the different ways you can put them together. Now, I'm going to use clips because I'm lazy and that's the easiest way, but you can use a rubber band. You can use string and just wrap it around tightly this way, up and down, all every which way. Um, what else can you use? Rubber bands, any, let's see, I think that's, those are the main things. I have started using these binder clips and I find them to be quite easy to use, so <laughs> they're very messy. Um, I just clip everything together and you can do it, you can bind your packets together very, very tightly and you'll probably get better imprints. Um, I tend to do mine pretty tight with these binder clips, but I don't obsess over it. And so, as I said before, I usually get pretty good results. And um, you'll see, we'll all see together <laughs> the results that we get. So I do make sure I clip, um, if I have an extra little piece sticking out, I just cut it. <laughs> and I do make sure I clip all the sides. Sometimes I'll put two clips if I have a big fat bundle that I need to squish together. I put two on the end, but after a while, it's hard to get these, um, you know, to lay flat, so flat-ish. I'm gonna do the same with my little bundle. Again, I could use string. I could use um, this one is almost not not even working. <laughs> that clip it's almost lost all of its oomph. So let's try a different one and. Um, you can use whatever you want to use. I put these down so that they'll fit easier in my pot. The smaller ones are kind of losing their um, their oomph, as I said. Now, wait a minute. I have to lift this up first and put this down. I don't know if this is going to work. There we go. This is really messy <laughs> with these, ah, but it's all right. It'll come out. It'll be fine. You can wear gloves if you don't like the mess as much. I don't like to wear gloves very often and or I forget or I start out with them and I take them off so I've given up. Okay so I have my bundles ready. I'm gonna move over to the stove and show you my setup over there. Okay, I have my big old pot. This is the giant pot I have. It's like a lobster pot. It's really big. You can see my <laughs> reflection. Um, I ordered it online. I didn't realize it was so big because I wanted it to be able to fit my bundles. So 
these fit in there. Be very careful, the water's boiling. Woo. Put them in there. And then what I do is, you can use a rock. You don't have to have this, but I happen to have a brick. And I put it right on top. Whoops, wow. Make sure it doesn't topple over. It's a little shaky. Okay, so in my water, I don't measure. I just put a bunch of water in there. I poured some vinegar in there. I put my acorn ink in there. And also, I always have in this pot, always have some rusty washers and nails and extra bits because the rust, I think, also helps your papers to look good. So I'm going to boil. It's already boiling, so I'll turn it down. And I will set a timer and check it every um, about 20 minutes or so. I let it boil for about an hour and a half and then we'll take them out. Um, you have to check though every 20 or 30 minutes at the most because if your water boils down you have to add more water. My bundles have been boiling for about an hour and a half. I took them out of the pot and I put them in this pan that I you keep right by the pot so then I fish out my bundles with uh, some tongs that I keep just to do this. Again, don't use for cooking. And I have this right next to my pot and I just quickly dump them in there carefully with some oven mitts that I use to not burn my hands. So I let these, I forgot to say also, uh, the reason I put the brick or if you wanna use a heavy rock or whatever you can use on top of these bundles while they're boiling is again to add more pressure so that the, you know, there's more pressure on the leaves, on the paper and they imprint better. So, um, I let I take these out and I let them sit in this pan for a little while uh, like five or ten minutes because I'm too impatient to let these completely cool off before I open them up so I clean up a little bit put some things away and then I come over and open these up a little now I will need to let these completely dry before I handle them too much but I'm going to show you <clears throat> excuse me some of the results and by the way, I also, after I stopped recording, I made a, my second, I made two of these bundles. I made a second one and I had my, my little ones. So here we go. This is warm. It, it cools off pretty quickly, actually. So I take off my clips. This acorn ink <laughs> turn these black. So I hope my papers aren't too dark. We shall see. Maybe it's too much acorn ink. I don't know. That stuff is potent. Very potent. I try to open these carefully because again, I probably should wait. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wow, I love that. And somewhere I got some pink in there. I don't even know. This is what I love about this process. You never know what these are gonna look like. So what I do is I, tr I take them apart carefully. The, the watercolor paper, let me get a napkin because boy, this is dirty. Um, the watercolor paper works great and it's quite sturdy. Look at that. Oh, that's so cool. But I'm not going to take that apart, but I am going to lift up this and I'm going to lay it out on my plastic cloth, my plastic, to let it dry completely. I won't take that off either because... Um, Oh, this is really hot underneath, burning my fingers. So this book paper is very, very um, thin. Oh, it's already tearing. So I'm very carefully, oh, I'm tearing it a little bit. Try not to get too many tears, but sometimes it just tears. Oh, you know what? The leaves were folded over. Okay, let me take some of them off. All right, so here we go. Let's try this again. Let's see what's going on here. It's like a little excavation. So I leave some of the bundles, look at that. That's with green construction paper, I think. Oh my gosh, That look how gorgeous that is, wow. See why I can't wait? I just can't wait. Oh, I have two, if I knew I had two of these, I could have made another one. Oh well. All right, so I, I am not gonna open this one up because it's, it's too wet and it's it's thin paper, so I'm gonna let this part dry. I'll open them all up fully when they're completely dry and take the plants off. That's kind of cool, even though it's really dark. I can't believe that acorn ink was so dark. Let me take this off and see. 
what we've got here. <clears throat> um, I want to be careful because I don't want to oh, make too much of a mess. Green and yellow. Look at that. Look, look at that. And see, the other thing that happens with the construction paper is these leaves block the color that you put on top from going through to this paper, if that makes sense. So then you have this combination of what was underneath and what was on top. Does that make sense? <laughs> I don't know, but it's really gorgeous. There's something in here too, but I have to just let those, I let, I lay these packets out, like smaller packets out um, and let them dry completely or almost completely before I take them apart anymore because I don't want to tear anything. This one, sometimes the construction paper, or this is actually an index card, you know, some work better than others, but I still like that very faint print there. This is blue or uh, green. Well, I think, was it green or pink or blue? Gosh, now I can't remember. I should watch my video and look. <laughs> And this one's very faint too. I, I don't really think if I left it on there, I don't think it would become any darker than that. And here's one of my book pages, kind of a cool effect. Um, let's be very careful here. Underneath I have purple. I'm gonna leave those there, but well, see. Book pages are hit or miss. I like that effect, but the leaves don't always imprint that clearly. Look how beautiful that is. Ugh, I mean, come on. <laughs> um, these, this is from what's underneath. It's coming through the paper because this leaf was on top here. So isn't that cool? There. I'm not going to take that apart either. It's very wet. I'll let it dry a little more, but I will take apart, you know, where it's um, like, you know, I know it's like a little, little bundle. Look how beautiful that purple came out. Look at my hands. Ooh, boy. Dirty. And this is probably cool. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I love this. I love this part of this process. <laughs> Okay, let's do the little bundle next. I just lay all those pieces, parts out. I wait until they completely dry. And then I take the leaves off. I usually either iron them or flatten them in between heavy books. This is really, really grungy. Oh my gosh, are my hands ever gonna come clean after this? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, this is really slimy too. Ah. Wow, acorn ink is slimy. These might be too dark. I don't know. We'll have to see. Sometimes things dry differently as well. Lord, I think I'm going to have to dry, wash my hands a little bit in between bundles. I don't know. This is messier than even I normally. Look at that. Whoa. I do like that. Ugh. My nose is itchy. Of course. And this is the pink note card? I don't know. I threw a bunch of things in there. Um, well, that won't come off, so I'll just leave it. I, I want to be careful again with these, so um, I'm just going to look at, look at that. Oh my gosh. Now, these might dry lighter. The edges are really, really dark, so we'll see. I'm going to leave those all to the side. This is just beautiful. Wow. Um, I'm going to leave this one like, well, wait a minute. Maybe I see a little opening under here. I might be able to get this. Off. Okay, yeah. <gasps> Look at this. This is two cards, so I'm going to leave these to dry as well. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. And then let's look at, where's the other part of my map? Oh, here it is. Let's look at my other bundle quickly and then um, after everything dries, I'll show you how they look. So yeah, this was, um, I was a little bit nervous, to be honest, when I pulled them out of the water. I thought, uh-oh, this is gonna be way too dark. I made a mistake, but no. It's, honestly, I think it's hard to make a mistake with the eco-printing 
You put your bundles together, you wrap them up tight, you put them in the boiling water with vinegar. You don't have to have acorn ink. Those without anything at all, any co added color come out beautiful as well. So I've made those many times. Look at that. I mean, I really like this dark, these dark ones. Something different for sure. Oh, look at this. Look at that. This is two pieces as well. I'll leave this little sandwich to dry. And two more pieces. I'll leave these to dry. Look how pretty that is. I don't want to get my black fingers into the middle of that. So I'll be careful as I put that to the side. Oh boy. <laughs> Gosh. Oh boy. Uh, oh, look at that. <gasps> That's so pretty. The eucalyptus leaves, those came out good too. Nice and dark. Um, I'm gonna keep these together. So this is kind of what I do. Oh, this one, this one I think might come off easily. Okay, let's pull that off. There's that. That one's interesting. I like it. It's different, dark. That's to get, uh, different and dark as well. I really like that look. These I'm gonna leave, this little bundle. Look at that, whoa. I just love these. I'm running out of space to put these. <laughs> Let me leave that right there for a second. And then, last little bit. Oops. There you go. Ooh, that's dark. Kind of cool looking, I think. And this is eucalyptus too, let's see. Ooh, that came out nice, really, really dark. I like that look though. And again, these might dry completely, you know, not completely different, but they might dry quite a bit darker. Look how pretty that leaf is, wow. Wow, 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 I like it. Okay, one more, let's see, ooh. Look at that, oh my gosh. I don't wanna get my grimy fingerprints on there. So I'm gonna let those dry, just kinda of like that. I'll probably move this. In fact, let me move it now. And um, I'll come back to it when it's all dry. I'll open everything up and I'll show you all the results. All right, here I am with the results of my eco printing. And I love the way everything turned out. I almost always do. I, I really think you just can't go wrong with eco printing no matter what you do. So I'm going to try to go through this um, a little bit quickly because um, this is a long video already. But anyway, I took a couple of pieces out that didn't turn out that great. So most of them though did. These are just um, index cards. I love the way that looks. I really like these dark, dark colors. Let me see if you can see that. Um, I love the way that turned out. So I think these were like green and yellow index cards. I didn't. I don't pay close attention. It's terrible to what I'm doing. So I should. I should, but I just wing it every time, and it's fine. This is the really grungy one. Oh, I forgot to say this. This is uh, kind of important. Usually I don't have to clean off my eco prints that much, but these were especially grungy. And grungy is great to look at, but you certainly don't want it on your hands. If you remember how black and gunky my hands were, I didn't want that on my paper, especially if I use them in junk journals. Ew. So I, I let these dry completely overnight like I... Uh, I, on my blue plastic tablecloth that I used yesterday. Just like that, when I opened them on the video I showed you, I left them exactly the way I uh, they were when I did the video. And then this morning, I they, they had completely dried. I took all the leaves off. It's a little bit easier to get them off when it's all dried up. And um, then I ran all of these through some cool, like uh, tap water. Uh, room temperature water because um, I thought that would be the easiest way to clean them off and then I laid them out on my tablecloth again and let them dry 
this was inside and they dried I think in a couple of hours had the ceiling fan on and it was all that's all fine um, once they dried again for the second time I went over them one more time with a damp paper towel because I just wanted to get any residual you know gunkiness off so now these are you know gunk free you can touch them they don't feel gritty or anything okay here we go again so these are the little index cards I made I really like the way these turned out again um, dark and they have a little bit of purple in there I think from the uh, other colors of the index cards paper and then I'll go through these kind of quick this one's really cool I love that look at that leaf I mean this is like the leaf that was on top and then this is the one from the bottom the eucalyptus is showing through this is that leaf with the holes in it it's almost like a shadow anyway I get see I love looking at these this one's not great great but I just wanted to show you um, grungy fern I like it this one's similar look at the back of that how cool is that okay then I have the larger index cards they turned out pretty good this one's not great but I wanted to show you what it looked like um, grungy I love it I love it love it love it these are very similar I just love 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 the way these turned out this pattern is created by my um, plasticky uh, cutting board things I have that pattern on and I, I like that too I think this might be that giant leaf I was wondering if I could use I stuck it on there at the end okay this is the purple construction paper and I realized that I used purple and pink so this probably one of these is the pink one I don't remember um, I don't know but this looks especially purple so this might be the purple purple one <laughs> and then I put the purple on top of a white uh, what do you call it Col uh, watercolor paper so that's what this is so see the purple from the construction paper was on top of there that transferred onto this page isn't that cool looking I really like the way that turned out and the back is really pretty too okay so that's <laughs> that's that Oh, I love these. Okay, this is the green. I think I use green and yellow construction paper. Look at that. How pretty is that? So the, uh, earlier I was trying to say when I was putting the packet together, I think it was, is that the leaves on this construction paper form like a resist. So you see the yellow come through. This was originally a yellow piece of construction paper. And the leaves, I guess I put a green one on top of that. Um, the leaves formed like a resist on the paper. I hope that makes sense. I love this one and I thought there was another one like this. Well, maybe not, but this is like the two sides of that. Oh, I love it. Okay, this is the regular copy paper. So I wanted to show you how nice that comes out and it's you know it's thin but look I want I they went through water twice and they're fine uh, one of them I think teared a little bit tore a little bit <laughs> teared mm. anyway look how pretty that those leaves are how pretty look at that it got some of the color from the construction paper on it I mean you know this is so pretty and I like I said I would fold this and put it in a junk journal probably here's another copy paper um, no, I guess my copy paper didn't tear at all. So I was careful, but it shows you you can use it. Now the book pages are pretty thin and they did tear a little bit. Like you can see right here when I was washing them for the second time. I don't mind things like that. I think, um, you know, this would go in a grungy uh, junk journal. So um, it's fine. And I wouldn't, for thin pages like this, even if I hadn't eco dyed them, I would probably use masking tape or washi tape down the center anyway. Look how gorgeous those colors are. I hope that's coming through on the camera. Oh gosh, I could just stare at these all day. This one tore a bit. I can tape them together. I can tear these pages apart. In fact, I'll take these apart now. 
and use them separately. I can tear them apart, use them in collage into smaller pieces. You know, you can use them any way you want to. I love the way these book pages turned out though. I didn't think they would be that good. And then this is the 90 pound watercolor paper. Um, you know, this is pretty strong, so it holds up to water really well. A lot of these look very similar, um, so I'll go through them rapidly. There's that pattern from the cutting mat thing. And then, look how beautiful that is. And then, um, I love the way those um, kind of, I don't know what those plants are that I used on there, the way that turned out. This one's really pretty with that background and the leaves on there. This one did tear, actually, because um, I was not careful enough. But again, I can put some masking tape on there. I really like the way masking tape looks on here. I've said that already, but I'm gonna say it again, <laughs> apparently. Can't tell if this is upside down. I think it goes this way. I don't know. But I love that look. And this is actually the whole of the cutting board is darker and I kind of like that too. You don't really know what that is unless I were to tell you. And then my last one. Look how nice that is. Look at those patterns. I just love, I just love eco printing. But looking at these makes me want to do some more right now, but I'm not going to. I have so many vapors. It's just like an obsession. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something useful out of it. I hope I made sense, and if you have any questions at all, you can, of course, feel free to ask down below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.